Howdy, Jacob here. Today we're looking at Information Services Group, ticker symbol I, I, I. All right, let's get into some financials here. So 3.85% dividend yield, just under the 4% we're looking for. $227 million on the market cap side, $288 million on the enterprise value. Pretty small company. Some I usually look at that I haven't really posted on my videos. I like to look at, um, you know, how much of the business is held by insiders. 28% is a good amount, definitely a good amount for a company. Um, and definitely one that is important to look at for such small companies. 28% is, is more than comfortable. It's basically saying that management has skin in the game and they're going to want to do things for the business that are in the best interest of Everybody, since they hold money in it too. And so um, with 28% insider holdings, that's that's good to see. Um, about $60 million in net debt. It's not, it's not terrible. Um, $74 million on their long-term debt. Let's see what their average five-year cash flow is. So $7 million, rolling 12, $8 million last year, $41 million, $42 million, $18 million, $15 million. Uh, maybe, you know, 20 average, we could probably say. So that's less than four times their five-year average free cash flow. I think that that's reasonable. And it doesn't look like they're in too much more debt. It looks like when they do go in debt, they, they definitely try to pay it off, which is um, with a little bit of their excess free cash flow, which is good. Uh, as for payout, they pay out $9 million to get this 3.85% dividend yield. And I mean, again, if you average the last five, we're looking at about 20 million. So that's, that's a little under half. Um, I think that's reasonable. They also have 30 million in cash in cash equivalents. So that's three times a one year dividend. So, you know, if a, a year is not so great, um, it looks like they've issued a little bit of, of debt to both buyback shares as well as pay a dividend, but they don't really need to with the cash on hand that they have. So, and I mean, they're not in so much debt where it's, it's really a turnoff. Um, but just saying that they, they definitely can in the, the future, if they don't want to go into debt, use some of that excess cash that they have. Since it doesn't look like they do too many acquisitions, we see in 2016, 55 million, they, they use debt for that, um, which again, at that time might have been fine. Uh, that's still a good amount of debt, 116 at that time, and they were averaging about 10, so less attracted there from a business decision standpoint. But, you know, management, that might have, it might have worked out for them. Um, I won't really know until I dig into the, you know, their annual reports or quarterly reports as such. But for now, I think we can start to set some assumptions here. Their dividend hasn't been there long enough for me to change it, and their payout is just fine. So I'm just going to set it equal to what it is right now. A $9 million payout seems reasonable to me. On the revenue growth side, we're about $211 million, and 10 years later, 286 So pretty slow-growing business, it looks like. Might be something that grows pretty in line with inflation, and then that's deserving. Definitely a 13 P in price free cash flow. I don't see anything excess or a huge return on invested capital or moats to uh, deliver elsewise. And then 15% return. As for margins, I like that their free cash flow margins have been a little higher. Uh, you know, didn't check share based compensation. So 9 million, 7 million, 6 million, 9 million. So they're of their free cash flow. Maybe two third or a third is coming from stock based compensation if we're looking at a five year average. So that's fine. It's not so much a turnoff. I know a lot of internet companies, internet ba IT service based companies, um, or sorry, uh, companies in the IT service industry have um, some have cash flows looking very attractive and then you dig more into it and their stock based compensation is the sole reason for it. But in this case, it's probably a little higher than what I'd want it to be, but it's not so much. It's going to turn me off on any of my 
assumptions just yet. Just something to keep in mind when you think about reviewing this company a little bit farther. Um, I guess the good news about that is that, again, their management is holding the stock. Uh, so you, from good faith, you'd assume that they do what's best for the business. Uh, anyways, net income margin, let's assume 4%. Let's assume 6% free cash flow margin, share change. Um, they bought back more in 2022, but every other year they've increased shares. Looks like it's due to stock-based compensation. Um, nothing necessarily wrong with that at the moment, uh, but for right now, has to fall 54% to give us a 15% return given the assumptions at hand here. I'll say one thing I do like is that uh, the insider ownership is pretty grand, but that can only do so much for you. That's really just to tell you that management should hopefully do what's right for you. As for the business part, I don't see it growing much faster than 3%. Or the margins, I mean, their free cash flow margins have been higher historically, but if we're taking averages, 6% is, seems pretty reasonable to me. All these assumptions seem reasonable. So to me, it's just a company that I'm just going to be waiting for. And one that I am interested in, but one that, um, you know, I don't look at companies in depth until they get to a, a price that's more attractive or else I'd just be wasting my time um, that I could be doing other stuff. So for now, I'm just, just hands, hands on my butt, just waiting and, um, uh, going to be reviewing other stocks. So hopefully everyone had a good video and uh, thank you very much.